Davis greater kudu in the middle? Yeah, I bet he totally just farted. And the other two like stopped on their tracks. And this guy's like, really Jerry? You had to do that when we're all around. Bonjour everyone, hope you're all having a good day. My name's Clans Mahoney, and I wanna thank you guys for checking out my vlog. For today's exploration, it's the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles. Now I've been here before, and I can't wait to show you guys what I found. Did you know that this place opened in 1913? It is the largest natural history museum on the West Coast, and it hosts over a million people annually. That's a lot. Now this place is big, and I can't cover it all in one video, but for today's exploration specifically, we're going to see a death trap. We're going to learn about the birds and the bees. I'm going to speculate on a possible reindeer murder. We're going to see the evolution of the human skull. And we're going to learn about what Los Angeles looked like in a time long past. I'm also going to share two tips with you. That's right, two tips that can save you guys time and money when you come into downtown Los Angeles. So with all that said, let's get going. And typical. I'm stuck in traffic going into downtown LA. But even traffic can have its benefits. This gave me a tip that I just I can give you guys. If you need to go anywhere, especially into downtown LA or maybe into out to Anaheim, someplace like that, try to be on the road before three o'clock because after that you start getting into rush hour traffic. Now if you're at your destination and it's time to leave, try to stick around before until after 7 p.m. because again you'll stuck in, you'll be stuck in traffic anywhere between those times. So try to leave before three and try to stay until after about seven. Man, isn't this a cool mural? You see a lot of art like this in downtown LA. That is really, really uh, artistic. I don't know what else to say about so it. I want to give you guys a fresh tip. And this is, I mean, totally fresh. Just hot off the grill fresh. Always bring cash when you come into downtown LA. Because I just tried to park and the first place I went to, they said, no, we only take cash. And I didn't have any cash on me. I only had card. So always bring cash with you. And remember that when you go into downtown LA, the further you go into downtown LA, the higher the prices are going to be to park. Hey, Eddie, did you hear we're right next to the Natural History Museum? Oh, God, are you serious? Yeah, let's go inside and check it out. And here in the Shadow Garden, LA is a biodiversity hotspot. We have over 500 species of birds here. There's a leaf litter, great for hiding and foraging. Thistle seed, yum. Bird bath for a drink and a dip. Well, it's probably also for washing off all the smog that these birds probably fly through when they're flying through downtown LA. The Shadow Garden is for the birds. What makes this place so appealing? See for clues. And they've got a house finch, lesser goldfinch, I don't know why they're trying to put labels on them. That's not very nice. B Bush tit. God, I shouldn't laugh at that. A morning Dave. Was there also an afternoon Dave or a night Dave? And an eastern fox squirrel. Birds are munching on their thistle seeds. Hey, is one of you guys Dave? I read something about a morning Dave. You should probably go home now. It's afternoon. Let afternoon Dave come in. Let him get some food in before nighttime Dave comes in. Bee hotels. Over 500 kinds of bees live in Los Angeles. And only about half of them are hipsters. Unlike European honey bees, which build hives and are slightly trashy. Most native bees are solitary. They lay eggs in their holes in the wood or open ground, then fill the holes with pollen or nectar for the larva to eat, as long as it's gluten free. Do you see any signs of bees using this hotel? Well, it's pretty late, so I imagine it's probably che past checkout time. So we'll have to wait till later when they come and check in. A lazy trap. That weird tent is a death trap for insects. They fly inside, try to escape, and end up in a jar filled with ethanol. Watch our sign. Watch our scientists soften them in the nectar lab from 11 to 3. Wednesdays through Sundays. 
They're finding species new to LA. Torturous device itself, where the scientists trap innocent insects and then take them back to study to create new and horrible insects to unleash upon the city of Los Angeles. Or they're just studying them. I'm actually not sure. Well, I got my ticket to the Natural History Museum. Meet your planet. Didn't know I needed to meet my planet when I live on it, but oh well, this ought to be educational. Oh jeez, look at that. It's a whale skeleton. Or fish. And look at this, they actually have its corpse here. Did you know that in Russia, they have the exact same thing? Well, not an or fish. It's actually the corpse of Vladimir Lenin. But it's preserved like that, so people can come visit him. Da, comrade. Tis the best way to preserve the motherland. First up is the Hall of African Mammals. And look at this lion. Look how, look how her ears are perked up. You know why? She doesn't smell food. She heard that the McRib is coming back at McDonald's. These lions are all having a good old time. See, this is the one we saw that's heard that the McRib is coming back. This one's just laughing hysterically. That one's scratching its back, trying to feel good. But then the problem is we move over here. Oh my, jeez, what is that? Is that a zebra leg? Well, it can't get any worse than that, right? That lion's there, and... What? Oh, there's a... Oh, jeez, there's a zebra head there, and then a leg. Oof, this is quite the scene of death. Well, that was pretty gruesome, right? I did not expect that. I did not be, expect to see a scene of pure carnage when I'm at the Natural History Museum. I'm trying to learn about animals, so you know what? I'm going to go to the next exhibit. Hopefully it's better. I mean, it can't be as bad as that. Oh, geez, that's even worse. These spotted hyenas have completely eviscerated whatever that poor thing was that they're now f f r literally ripping the meat off the bone from. Stellar sea lion did not appreciate the description they gave of him. But man, look at how big that guy is. You know he just came from an all-you-can-eat buffet. And he is totally about to pass out in a food coma. These are caribou. They're basically the North American version of reindeer. And, I mean, there's nothing much to tell. Except for the fact that, why are there two horns just randomly lying on the ground? And I started to think about it. Look at how they're all looking around. Do you think they might have done something to the owner of those horns? And that's why they're all looking around nervously? They're like... That they, I think they're onto us. They might, they might have just figured this out. I've heard about this before, but apparently do, they do sleepovers at the museum. I mean, that's nothing new. But here's what really baffles me. Look how amazingly excited these kids are about staying at the museum. You know they don't really want to be here. On second thought, maybe they do. Maybe it's like a night at the museum and everything comes to life at night. But then does that mean that that eating zebra comes to life at night too because I hope not that'd be terrifying so this is pretty cool look it's showing a cheetah running and then it's showing what a cheetah looks like running with just a skeleton but here's a display where they're showing humanoid skulls throughout history and basically how it evolves into what we have now Carnotaurus had a mouth lined with sharp teeth that combined with the fact that it could run upright on its legs suggests it was an active hunter. Sometimes rare finds give us clues to dinosaur diets, including the remains in fossil poop and a dinosaur's last meal inside its belly. Wouldn't you have loved to have been that scientist, the one that's got to study dinosaur poop? Like all the other ones are out in the field digging up dinosaurs and you're like, Man, I gotta study this crap. So I'm in the Becoming Los Angeles exhibit, and they have this really interesting map of downtown LA. From 1938 through 1940, this is what downtown Los Angeles looked like. Well, unfortunately, that wraps it up for me today at the National History Museum of Los Angeles. I really enjoyed myself here. Unfortunately, I got here a little late, so I didn't get to see everything. I hardly got to see the creating Los Angeles thing at all. But it starts from like the 1700s or something when Los Angeles was first founded to into like the 30s or 40s. But I still saw a lot of cool stuff. I really like seeing all the animals. That was really cool. So if you guys want to come check it out, I'm going to put a link in the description box to this place. 
and hopefully you can come and explore it. They have a lot of cool things. But I'm off now. It's time for me to find some food, get some food in this belly. So I hope you guys have a good day. Remember, like, comment, subscribe. Tell me where you want me to go next. What else would you like to see around SoCal, SoCal in Los Angeles? And hopefully I can help you out. So until next time, keep it kosher.